Hello and welcome to week six, the final week of the GPS MOOC. Uh, congratulations on making it this far. In just five weeks, you've been through pseudoranges, DOPS, decibels, link budgets, Friese's formula, mixes and down converters, correlators, AGPS, coherent integration, and non-coherent integration. You've seen quite a lot of math along the way, and I'm pleased to tell you that in this final week, uh, things are a lot easier. We're not looking at any more math. We're just going to look at all the different GNSSs. Now, we've talked about GPS mostly, almost exclusively until now. And we focused on GPS, the Global Positioning System of the United States. And now we're going to talk about GNSS, which is the generic term. And that's Global Navigation Satellite Systems. And each of these countries and regions represented by the flags has one. And we will go through them one at a time and see how they are similar and different to GPS and how they are evolving for the future. So the way this week is going to go is that we'll begin in the very next video by looking at what's common among all GNSSs. And that'll give us a framework so that it makes it easy to go through them one at a time. We'll begin with GPS. And for the first time, we'll look at future GPS orbits and signals. Future GPS, by the way, is called GPS3. And when we look at the orbits, I'll show you simulations of the orbits in video. And uh, so you'll see satellites in simulated orbits. So you can actually see for yourselves what the orbit speeds look like for the different kind of orbits, such as what's shown here uh, in the top right. And so we'll have lots of those for the different systems. And then we'll go through the systems one at a time. GLONASS from Russia, QZSS from Japan, Beidou from China, Galileo from the European Union, and IRNSS, the Indian Regional Navigational Satellite System from India. So we'll look at each of those in turn, what their orbits are like, what their signals are like. Then at the end of that, we will show you a, a recent update on all of those different GNSSs. And the, and the purpose of doing that is to show you how none of these are static. So uh, there are plans for these systems that are put in place, and then the plans change for each of them. There are budget constraints. Uh, we're putting rockets up into space. Rockets can explode. Orbits don't always work out as planned, and so on. And so these systems actually change with time. And we just had a very recent update in September of all of these different systems at a, an international conference. And I'll show you that update as a separate module, because in the future, you should always view it like that. Whatever you learn in modules 6.2 through 6.8, you should check for an, a latest update, because it is going to change in the future. So the, the September 2014 update will be its own module. Then we'll look into why we need all these satellites. When you look at how many are coming, you'll see a picture like that, just satellites galore. Uh, well over 100 satellites are going to be providing us with navigation signals. Why do we need so many? We'll look into that. And then finally, we'll end up with something I call the GNSS Zoo, which is a collection of all these different species of satellites and signals. And we'll, we'll bring them all together and finish the week uh, on that.